Welcome back. I am the Gamer Under Development, and this is the Warframe Beginner's Guide to the Galaxy. We're going to be picking up where we left off on the last episode, that is finishing the Arcwing mission. The other thing we're going to do is take a look at where we're at on weapons and mods and things, because we have moved along a little bit. We no longer have our dual skanas because we've capped those out. We're now using the Anki Rows. These are a fist weapon. The dual skanas we're going to hold on to because we can use them to craft a couple other weapons later down the line. The Anki Rows here, we will also be able to craft into a couple new fist weapons when they're done. But for right now, let's take a look at their modding situation. Now, I've already put in five ranks on them, so they have a little bit of capacity here. But we also have a stance mod for them. Now you'll notice that the polarity on the stance mod is not a match for the stance slot. So if we put this on here, instead of getting five additional capacity, we're only going to be getting four additional capacity, which is fine. That's just where we're going to go. Uh, Mod-wise here, there are a couple different options. We could go to increase our impact damage, which is okay, but the impact proc really isn't that great. We could go for pressure point for just straight up plus 20% damage. But what I think is going to be nice here, just because we already have them, is to go for Volcanic Edge and Vicious Frost. Now, the reason that's nice is because it's going to give us a little bit more status chance, but more important than that, it's going to give us a hybrid damage type, which is Blast. So the way that Blast works is it's almost like a, an AoE explosion type thing that happens when it triggers. Uh, so we'll be able to punch them in the face, and as we're punching them, they'll explode out. Now, if I had some different... If I was doing this for the most optimal build, then I would be going for crit chance. Now, the thing is, we don't actually have the crit chance mod yet. We have the crit damage mod, so that's not going to be an option really and the reason I would do that is because if we look at the base of this you'll note that the crit chance is 20% the status chance is only 10% that's a good indicator that a weapon is meant more for crit than status but I'm gonna go like this just because we do get that hybrid damage type and we also get a slightly higher status chance out of it uh, plus I just like those mods it's personal preference honestly with the Anki Rose we're gonna unload on people and they're gonna go flying through the air that's what matters uh, so the Kunai are close the Bolter is close our little companion guy is done, so is his weapon. So what we're going to do is take a look at our companion guy, see if there's anything else we want to put on him. So repair kit's actually nice. That'll heal him up a little bit more. And then we also have synth deconstruct. Enemies injured by the companion have 2% chance to drop a health orb when killed. Uh, that's actually not bad for us either. And then guardian, which boosts the owner's shield by 58% when it runs out. All of these are very, very nice, but one thing we're going to do here right away is now that we have the capacity, we're going to max out Vacuum. Now let's take a look at what Vacuum does. 6.5 meter companion gather link detects and collects items including mods. So basically your companion will scoop up mods and anything else that falls on the ground. That was the wrong thing to click. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go into mods here. We're going to grab Vacuum. And we're going to upgrade this to the maximum we can afford to do it, which is the maximum, thankfully. It is going to give it a lot more drain there. That's okay, we have the capacity because he's capped out. This is primarily why we have this companion, is to scoop up loot for us. Now that's an 11.5 meter loot scoop, so that's really great. Uh, we could also do Enhanced Vitality if we find that our companion is dying a lot. Honestly, I'm not super worried about that at the moment, though. Uh, we could upgrade Synth Deconstruct. We could upgrade most of these. We have six more capacity, but we don't need to yet, so I'm going to kind of hold off. Early on, when you don't have a good source of endo, it's almost a little bit safer just to store your endo than it is to kind of spend out and get the things you think you might want. Uh, that's, that's at least my opinion. You can go all in if you want to. Obviously, everything is your choice as the player. Uh, so we can drop Speed Trigger off of his gun because we now have our maximum capacity. So we've got Stormbringer, and what I'm wondering is, do we actually have something that goes nicely with it from an elemental perspective to get us a hybrid damage type? We have Cryo Rounds. That'll get us Magnetic. This is actually not a terrible thing for your companion. I wouldn't recommend it for your main damage, but for your companion, giving them Magnetic means that they will be able to help you strip down shields a little bit faster, which is actually kind of a cool concept. The other option that we have is that we could cut that and we could go with Toxin here, which would give us Corrosive, which helps us strip down armor. But as you can see, that actually gives us a slightly lower damage total. So I think what we'll do is we'll go ahead and stick with the Magnetic here. It's going to give us 7.5 additional damage, or it's going to raise our damage with Magnetics to 7.5 versus the Infected Clip here, which is, oh, I guess it still takes us to 7.5, but a lot less of that damage is Corrosive. We still keep Cold, though. Actually, that's kind of interesting. Does his weapon default to cold damage? It does. Okay, so that was surprising. Uh, so that's something you can also consider. So if we just put Infected Clip there, we automatically get Viral Damage. 
which is a really solid damage type, so we might go with that. And then if we add in Stormbringer here, we should just get Electric? No. Interesting. So there's, there's some weird interactions when things have default damage types that are elemental. So because this is cold, I think what it's doing is it's taking the last mod that we place. So if we place this, it's going to say Magnetic, but if we then place Infected Clip, it's going to give us Corrosive. Weird. Very weird. Either way, this way we get two different damage types, which is kind of nice, so I think we'll do that. We'll leave it at that. And then, I mean, if we really wanted to, we could also put Cryo Rounds on here just to amp up our damage a little bit more. And at that point, it's kind of whatever we want. We can put some crit rating on. It doesn't matter all that much. He doesn't really have any IPS damage. That's impact, puncture, or slash, so putting those on won't help very much. Uh, let's give him Bane of Corpus. Sure, let's give him Bane of Corpus, and if we swap these, we can get back to Magnetic. I actually think that might be a little bit better if we're going to give him Bane of Corpus, because it means he'll strip down those shields even faster, and the Corpus can be kind of problematic early game because of those shields. Okay, so that is done. Now let's take a look at our Arcwing. I know, guys, you were like, gosh, so much modding stuff. Uh, but now we have our Arcwing here. The Arcwing has its own mod slots. As you can see, it's got a couple polarized things. We don't really have any mods for it yet, so that's all right. This is our arc gun. Your arc gun is kind of like a heavy weapon, and this is probably the most relevant part of your arc wing setup, because later on in the game, we are going to be able to bring our arc gun into regular missions. That's what this heavy weapon slot here is for, uh, and we can not put that in there at the moment because we don't have the ability to bring the heavy weapon into a mission yet, but something to keep in mind. So your arc gun is probably the most important part of your arc setup. Uh, and then we also have our Arc Melee, which we don't have any mods for. Which is weird, because I thought I'd picked up some at some point. I guess I'm wrong, though. Alright, so with all of that stuff said, I want to check one more thing, and that's whether or not we have a Spectre available. We do. We have a Charger Spectre. We're going to go ahead and grab that. If you have this, you want to equip it. The main reason for that is because this week there is a Nightwave objective to send out a Spectre. So we're going to do that on our next ground mission. I think Bolt is probably good where he's at. The Bolter could have some more mods on it. It doesn't really need them though. Like I said, we're early enough in the content that you won't really notice the difference that much. Uh, but just because we can, we'll throw on Stormbringer. We'll throw on Piercing Hit because we do have pretty good puncture damage on this. We could also just upgrade some of these, but like I said, unless we're 100% sure that we have extras, I don't want to upgrade them because that will basically mean that they're harder to use on new builds. Uh, let's take serration off for a moment. We do have three serrations. Okay, so because we have three serrations, here's what we're going to do. We know that our current MR is four, I believe. Yes, current MR is four. So the base capacity of serration is four, which means that we can basically use this on any new weapon we start leveling. Uh, so I am going to take this up a little bit, but another trick you can do is you want to keep your leveling mod at the same level as your MR. So when we hit MR5, instead of having a rank 0 serration that we use when we're leveling weapons, we'll keep one at rank 5. So every time we start a weapon, we can put serration on it for damage. In this case, because we're using this on a weapon that's a little more developed and we have an extra serration that we can keep at our MR, I'm going to go ahead and just mod this one. We've got 14 capacity left. So let's take this up and see how much we can take it up without getting exorbitantly cost or costed. So that's that's pretty good. Uh, we take it up to 10 here. It's going to consume a reasonable amount. You really don't need to. Early game, you don't really need to take anything to max rank. As you can see, this gets a little crazy when you do that. So about rank 7, rank 8 is probably where you want to stop. But I mean, even if we go to rank 7 right now, that's going to be all of our money. So that's not great. Uh, that's pretty good. That's a chunk of our money, but it's a chunk of our money to get our main damage mod for rifles in a good place, so let's go for it. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. It's telling us that it uninstalled it from all of the other weapons because the capacity might not be high enough for it to be on there. So in this case, we know it is high enough for this weapon. We've still got six left that we can play with, so let's go ahead and throw something on that increases perhaps puncture. Oh, we actually don't have Point Strike on, so we'll take that. That'll basically do it for us. I think that's probably fine right there. Uh, we may want to go check our Companion again to make sure that when we upgraded Serration, we didn't cause it to get ripped off this. We did, actually. So, in that case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take Point Strike off and see if we can still fit that Serration. Not quite. We're still a little high, so let's take Bane off. There we go. Now we've got that Serration. Got a little bit extra damage there. Seems worth. All right. 
So that should be everything we need to worry about with mods. Sorry that took so long, guys, but uh, it does take a second to upgrade your stuff. And you generally want to do it anytime you think you're going to be taking on new content that might be a little bit above your pay grade at the current moment. I don't think that's what's going to happen here. I think we're going to go take this Arcwing mission. It's going to be real easy. And then once that's done, I'm going to show you guys how to do the next junction. As well as show you that big surprise I have for you guys. It's not a... I mean, it's a big surprise for me because I put a bunch of work into it, but I think you guys will like it. Uh, we will also go about potentially obtaining a blueprint for a flamethrower today. Alright, we're just gonna skip the cinematic so we can load in a little bit quicker here. This should be the final mission in the Arcwing Chain, but I can't say for sure. Also, since we have a stance mod on the Ankyros, we can do some interesting things here. If you aim first and then you punch, you'll actually use stylized stance attacks. And if you hold forward, you can see we get this really weird rapid punching one, where we'll just dash into enemies and we'll rapid punch kill them. Uh, I was mainly just showing that off because stance attacks can be incredibly useful. Like that one does kind of pop them up and then knock them down at the same time. Uh, going through that laser probably not going to help us too much. But at this point, what we're going to do is we're just going to speed boost. Because we want to go ahead and finish this mission as quickly as possible so we can move on to our next junction. Uh, because we do seem to be alone in here, we're going to be able to open that. Oh, somebody just, like, teleported us back. All right, good for you. Good for you. Let's go get us Vayhek. Wait, did that... Did I get turned around there when they teleported me? I think I did. Yeah, I did. I got turned around after that teleport, so do be mindful when you get teleported like that. Not a lot of enemies do that. Uh, typically, it's late-game enemies, the Kuva Liches, that will do it, so you won't have to worry about that too much. But when it does happen, make sure to reorient yourself because you might get turned around like I did. I'm just going to keep on jetting through here on our Volt. Be able to hit this switch because we don't have anyone with us. If you do have another player, you will... Oh, okay. So those are important. Uh, we don't need that one in particular, but we're going to get it anyway. I did burn through our synthesis scanners, but we still have some codex scanners left. So I'm going to go ahead and use the codex scanner to grab that. Now, once you scan that down, you'll see a little thing that pops up like that that says Venus found. Uh, what that's talking about is that you found some lore from Venus that will show up in your codex on the ship. I'm gonna pull my bolter back out and just unload. You should see that the bolter's doing... Oh my gosh! Look at that! We bolted him to the wall. Uh, the bolter should be doing significantly more damage than it has been in past, which is great. Um, and those codex things aren't super important, but there are some cool lore tidbits hid in them. And the other advantage to them is that for our next junction, we actually need to get three of them in Mars. And I've already done two, but I saved the last one in Mars so that I can show you guys how to find them and how to do them. Uh, and we're also using a mod on Volt that should help us do that. I don't know if you guys saw that, but the execution for this melee weapon is to just punch them over and over again when they're on the ground. It's kind of great. I love the animation. Uh, so yeah, execution with the Ankyros, 100. Let's go. So we're almost there, 90 meters or so, until we get to the final position for this. I'm not sure if it's a boss or what. Oh no, it's just... <laughs> Look at this. This is great, guys. We're like Iron Man. Ortis, deploy the arc wing. Oh, look, here we go. We Iron Maned up, y'all. We Iron Maned up. Now what? We are the Iron Man. Okay, so if you hold down... Mine is set to 6 because I have a mouse with a button on it, but it's shift for you guys, probably. Uh, you basically hold down your sprint key to move faster. If you double tap it, you'll dash forward like that. There's little cooldown things that pop up around your reticule for your dash. So you can see them kind of charging up there. Uh, yep, this is an enemy. So they just kind of float in space. You shoot them, you get levels up on your arc wing. Uh, it is worth noting that leveling your arc wing stuff will give you mastery rank. Ooh, we got extend plus 25 range on our arc melee. All right, let's keep on taking these things down and moving towards our objective here. Now you can basically select an arc wing mission from the uh, navigation of your ship once you get this done. And they can be fun. It really depends on what you enjoy. And the majority of Arcwing content is going to be specifically for Arcwing missions or later on for Railjack missions where you have your own spaceship that you can fly. 
but as I said before, upgrading your arc gun is actually useful because later you will be able to deploy that as a heavy weapon in regular missions. Okay. Oh, did we just get bubbled? Uh-oh. We got bubbled. That's because this thing right here is projecting that bubble, so we gotta destroy it. And that'll allow us to continue progressing. Did you drop anything good? Give me give me mods. Give me arc gun mods. I want the arc gun mods, please. Okay, so now we get to keep moving. If we run into another one of those zeppelins blocking the objective, we will have to destroy it to get through. Uh, it is pretty far out there, so we're going to keep using our dash. And as you can see, the little things charge up. Once it disappears, you can go in again. And that's kind of the fastest way to get around in your arc wing. Uh, there's also little loot nodes and stuff floating in space that you can shoot at. But in this case, we just want to get through it. Uh, we did get Bleeding Edge, which is crit damage for our arc melee, and we got Extend, which is range for our arc melee. I didn't show off the melee too much, but the arc melee tries to lock you onto enemies once you swing, and then if you just mash E, you'll stay within range of them and keep hitting them. Uh, that is something that's been tweaked back and forth, so it may not be perfectly accurate, but it's pretty good. Alright, the arc wing is complete. Now we can do a bunch of other fun stuff. There are a couple different arc wings that you can get, uh, and actually we can we can look at that here right now. So the project that I've been working on in the background is for all of you. If you're watching this series right now, this is a project just to benefit you. We have a new clan called Eternal Sojourn, and clans are interesting in Warframe because they get to have dojos, which is where we're going to go right now, and those dojos get to do research. The research allows clan members to come in and buy blueprints for stuff. So this is the clan. We landed on top of the trading post. You can also trade here at a very, very cheap cost. Trading does have a tax. The lowest tax comes from ghost clans. This is a ghost clan. That means that it can only have 10 members or less, or it does not stay a ghost clan. So this is not meant to be your permanent home as a player. This is meant for you to come in and get blueprints for the stuff you need and then take off and go find a permanent home. Now I am working on a new dojo and a new clan on my main account called Gamer Under Development that will be a full-fledged clan. It's gonna have like two floors, it's gonna be gorgeous, it's so good. I've just started working on it. It's gonna take a little under three months to complete that dojo, but you guys are welcome to join that after you get done here. This is basically a pit stop and what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and look at the different things that we want to buy. Uh, now, there's all sorts of research. If it doesn't have this little icon on it in the corner, that means that it's not completed, so you can't buy a blueprint from it. We are working on stuff like the Banshee. We're sort of unlocking stuff as we go, but the important stuff you already have access to here. And if we sort by progress, we can see all the things that are done. So if you did not take Volt as your starter, you can come here, you can replicate a blueprint for Volt and all of his pieces and build Volt yourself so that you have a Volt to run around in. Uh, you'll also be able to obtain the Arcwing Launcher segment here, as well as the Kavat Incubator Upgrade segment, and the Landing Craft Foundry segment. Now, these are very, very important because the reason we want that Arcwing is because the Arcwing actually allows you to fly around the Plains of Cetus and Orvalis, so the open world zones, a lot faster than getting around in the K-Drive. Now, as you can see, it costs 15k to replicate this, so I'm going to go down here. I'm gonna replicate it or try and oh look, I can't replicate it because it requires Mastery Rank 5. So that is the one gotcha. You do need to hit Mastery Rank 5 before you can come get this stuff. But feel free to leave your name in the comments or even message me on Discord, whatever you want. Even in game, reach out to me and I'll pull you into the dojo so you can come get your stuff if you're MR5. Now what we can do is we can look at the blueprint here and see what materials we need. We need Grokdul, Iridite, and Oxium. Now, Grokdrul and Iridite both come from the Plains of Cetus, or Plains of Eidolon on Cetus, and I'll show you guys how to get those rather efficiently. Oxium, I believe, is mined from there as well, but I'm not 100% sure on that one. Uh, so, basically, the goal here is to give you guys a dojo where you can come in real quick and very cheaply buy all the things that you're going to need to progress in the game and then leave and go find a permanent dojo for yourself later. Now, if you want to join Gamer Under, Under Development, that is going to be a larger, more permanent dojo, and I welcome you to that. Just let me know, and we'll get you in there as well. Uh, so we were talking about different arc wings. There is the Emisha, the Itzel, uh, the Elytron. They all do kind of different things, but right now, the one that I would suggest focusing on, and I haven't quite built it yet, but we're going to work on that soon, is the Amisha. The Amisha is sort of a tanky defensive 
Arcwing, it allows you to deploy a bubble that will draw enemy fire and protect you or a point or something of that nature. And it's the one that everybody is using for kind of end game railjack content. So that's why I recommend that one. Uh, the Itzel is supposed to be the fastest one, but they kind of changed something about it that took away from that. So that was just the Tenno lab. There are other labs here with other things that you can gather, like you can come over here. This is the energy lab. And you can see that if you come in here and you sort by progress, you can build things like a blueprint for the Dara weapon. I do recommend that you get all of these base material researches, like Fieldrun Research allows you to build Fieldrun modules, which are important for crafting stuff later. Uh, and there's one in each of them. There's Fieldrun here, there's Mutagen Mass and another, and I can't remember the Detonite Injectors are the ones from the Grenier Lab. Uh, anyways, you can also build some weapons here. The Prova is a really fun melee weapon. I'm working on getting you guys the Lanka now. The Lanka is an energy sniper, and it is the sniper rifle that is preferred by many players for endgame content, so you'll be able to come here and get that. Uh, and then very soon we will be researching the Helios. The Helios is a companion that is like your Taxon, except for he just flies around and scans stuff for you, which will make Samaris very happy with you. Uh, so that's another one that's great to pick up. This is obviously still in progress, but the goal will be when it's done for you guys to be able to come into any one of these labs and there should be a list. See how this says one Fieldrum Blueprint? Like it would also then say something like... Let's see. To Helios. And maybe I'll add the prices for these blueprints here so that when you come in you can see how much the total price is going to be to buy all the stuff you need from this lab. But I want there to be a list in each lab so you guys can come in, you can get all the things you need, and then you can bounce and go find your permanent home. And doing that will keep this to 10 members or less, which will make sure that when you come in as a new player to get your stuff, you get it at the cheapest possible price, because the price scales based on the size of the clan. Anyways, cool project, been working on that for you guys, I think it's awesome, um, and I think it's a really fun venture. So now that we have completed that mission, we've also completed every single node on Venus, and that gives us access to a couple cool things. We now have the ability to build resource drones. Resource drones are something that you can craft and then release on a planet. They will gather the resources listed. So if we put a resource drone down here, it will bring us back alloy plates, polymer bundles, circuits, and field drone samples. Uh, I'm not actually, I've honestly never used the resource drones, but I hear from a lot of people that they're quite a nice way to gather resources. And I bet you if we look in here, we can find blueprints for them maybe? No? Uh, nope, those are definitely not resource drones. I think they might be constructed at, at the clan, but honestly, I haven't used them. I just wanted to make you guys aware that they do exist. They are useful if you want to use them. I generally just farm my own resources on my own because I find that to be efficient enough. But this is a nice passive way to do that if you'd like. The other thing we'll see here is that we now have access to a nightmare mode mission. Once you complete all the nodes on a planet, a nightmare mode mission unlocks. Nightmare Mode missions are intriguing for a couple of reasons, the main one being that they do ramp up the difficulty a little bit, but they reward you with a, re uh, not a relic, a mod that doesn't just boost one thing, it boosts two things, which is different from all the mods we've seen so far. So I think what we might do right now is just go for this. We're gonna go for this Nightmare Mode. I'm gonna show you guys this real quick, and then we will go look at Mars and finishing the Phobos Junction, and that should probably do it for this one depending on our time. This is uh, gonna be interesting. This is timed and death demolition mode. I think it's death demolition mode. Anyways, basically, there's special modifiers. So timed means that this mission will be timed and every enemy we kill will add to our time. So you can see the time limit in the corner ticking down. Uh, death detonation mode means that enemies that are killed will explode and deal damage to everything around them. So we don't want to be around the enemies when they die. Hi, friend. So we're going to burn him down. Uh, and you'll see as we kill enemies, our time limit goes up. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab that power cell right there because this is an excavation mission. And we're going to jet straight to the excavator. Now you don't need to worry too much about the time mode. You're going to end up killing enough enemies to keep that up in general as long as you're not just like stealthed up and not fighting. Uh, so we're going to run over here and get our excavator going, and then once our excavator is going, we will start to kill more enemies to keep our timer up. Alright, let's go. We do need to get five of these completed in order to finish this mission. Wow, that's more than I expected. Uh, but that is alright. It's not really taking much to defend this at the moment, but enemies should be coming in any moment now. 
All right, that guy's down. Time has been added. Lovely. Can I get some more enemies, please? Enemies where? Where you at, though? Ah, uh, hello. Okay, so now we're just gonna kill these guys. Keep this excavator going. Everybody, fingers crossed we get really, really good mods here, because there is one that I really, really love that's out of these low planet missions. Uh, and it is a mod that gives you plus 60% crit. And, I believe, plus 80% status or something of that nature. So it's just really good for making hybrid weapons. But it's also got a drop chance from these nightmare missions of, like, 1.8% or something. So the chance of getting it is pretty slim. Now, if we do get into trouble here while we're defending, we are Volt, so we can just do that. Well, I probably shouldn't have been that close when I shot him, because Death Detonation Mode is not good. Was it Detonation Mode, though, or was it Low Gravity? It might have been Low Gravity instead. Excuse me. Can you guys get off that point, please? Okay, thanks. Uh, so we're just going to keep on doing what we're doing. Everything is going good here. We just need our power cells to keep this running. I mean, honestly, it's already running, so I think what we might do here... It's got about 18 seconds left. It's a very, very low chance they're going to be able to kill it when it's at full power with 18 seconds left. So I'm going to go ahead and start the next one. Yeah, it's got about 8 seconds left. Shields are still good on it. 3, 2, 1, and it's done. Beautiful. Okay, so now we can stop watching that and focus on the enemies coming after this one. You don't really need to worry about it as much as long as you're by the excavator, because you can take out the enemies fairly quickly and provide new power cells. It's more when you leave one to finish like that that you do kind of want to watch it, because you may need to jet back over there real quick and protect it for a moment. Uh, excuse me, can you can you stop doing what you're doing? Okay, thanks. Uh, here, I'm going to run to the other side of our shield and start unloading on enemies through it so we get that extra damage. Uh, we're going to go ahead and work over some guys with our melee there just to make that a little bit quicker, mainly so we can get the shield back up on this by killing a power cell carrier. There we go. Now, I mean, there is an easier way to do this with Volt 2. We could basically just keep shocking everything that comes around. But our energy is not super steady at the moment, so probably not the best idea to do that. Now, if we do make sure to just run around collecting energy cells, we can kind of get away with just using shock. Uh, and it will clear groups of enemies rather efficiently here. It's going to give us another power cell. We can go ahead and drop that in. And then the next power cell we get, I think we can go ahead and move on to the next excavator. Once again, when we do that, though, we are risking the excavator a little bit. It's only got seven seconds left, though. And since this is Death Detonation, I don't really want to melee that guy to finish him. I'd rather kind of shoot him down. Wow, he's just absorbing damage. Okay, so we've got our third excavator ready to go. Yeah, this is low gravity. This is definitely timed in low gravity because we're not getting to the ground very quickly when we take to the air. Uh, low gravity isn't really a bad one as much as it's an interesting thing for Nightmare because it does make it a little bit harder for you to bullet jump through stuff. Uh, only if you use the double jump, though. If you don't use the double jump and you don't glide at all, it doesn't make much difference at all. All right, we're just going to hammer these guys down real quick. If the bolter's not capped out after this mission, I will be awestruck. It should be finished after this mission. The good news is we already have another weapon ready to go when it is done. Uh, definitely bring something that's leveled up a little bit to Nightmares, though, just to be safe. They're actually not that harder. I think they only increase the level of the enemies in the mission by, like, 10. So if you're doing a Nightmare on an early planet, it's not really something to be scared of. Most people see Nightmare Mode and they think of other games where it's like the end game version of everything. It's not really that here. Here it just makes them a little bit tougher. You get some extra sort of uh, gotchas to the mission and then you get extra rewards. Very, very good rewards, mind you. So definitely worth being brave and going into your nightmares once you unlock them. Uh, in fact, I would recommend doing them on every planet you have them available on whenever you can because the mods from them are just very, very powerful. Well, they can be. I mean, it's like everything else. Some of the mods are not that powerful, but most of them are quite good. Can you guys, like, not? Let's just let's just do a little shocky shock here, take out everything that's close, because we're not really getting a lot of power cells on this one, which is kind of problematic. Uh, we haven't been able to put another power cell in here yet, so it's just kind of halted. Would really, really like for one of you guys to bring a power cell to this party. 
be kind of nice. Anybody? I do see one on our map, but it's way, way back there. Uh, so this might be an instance where we volt it up. But if we do run back to get... Oh, wait a minute. How far back is it? Yeah, it's pretty far back. Let's do it. Let's volt it up. Oh, okay, no, that's way too far back. And we can see that the excavator's already taking damage right now. So if we go that far back looking for a power cell, there's a good chance that we're going to lose the excavator anyway. Which is not worth. And as long as we're killing enemies, our time limit is extending. There we go. Hello, power cell guy. What took you so long? Slowest delivery time ever. Can I, can I take that, please? Thank you, game. Thank you. All right. Excavator's powered back up. Let's get it done. 57 seconds left. Uh, that is just down to RNG right there. You can't really control the rate at which those power cell guys do spawn. Hello there, friends. Uh, so we're just going to take these guys out and keep trying to cover the point best we can. While we... You know what? Bye. Get toasted. Uh, I am totally fine with using our shock here. We're getting plenty of energy from the enemies. What we're not getting is plenty of power cells. We're halted again because we do not have a power cell. And yeah, this is... The not having power cells thing can be kind of frustrating. Here we go. Here's another one. And somebody joined the mission, so that'll make things a little bit easier, potentially a little bit faster if they want to go start the next excavator for us. Hey there. Oh, it's a Nidus. That'll be fun. Nidus is a very, very late game available frame, but he's also really, really good. Okay, got another power cell here. Let's dump that in and keep this running. Now we've got about 20 seconds. It's at full power. We can probably move on to the next one. Realistically, especially with Nidus here to watch our backs. Uh, these guys both have power cells. It figures now that it's about to be done, we get a whole bunch of power cells, right? Let's just do this. Yeah. All right, everybody's getting AoE'd. Do to do. You're done. Gift power cell. Uh oh. That's not good. We got glass enemies appearing now, which is not going to be fun to deal with, but we'll do it. Drop that power cell in, and it should be going. This is one of the glass enemies for Nightwave. I'm going to go ahead and kill them. We'll get some Nightwave standing. There's also a chance for them to drop these Cephalite resources that you need to continue with the Nightwave. Uh, I actually haven't even gotten past the first part of it yet, because the first time I tried, I had the wrong answer. Because uh, it's like a puzzle. And I failed the puzzle. All right, you dead. Gif. And let's go. Put another one in there. We have two more excavators to finish in order to be done with this. And there's another power cell. That's great. Now, I did just kind of waste that energy there because I thought I was going to pop him off with that, but he was already too low. So I just shot it into the ground. Way to go, me. Putting another power cell in. We've got plenty of time. We actually have more time than we started the mission with, which is why I say when you get these timed ones, you don't really need to worry about the time that much. Got about 40 seconds left, but the power is at full. Oh, and Nidus is just... Yeah, Nidus is bossing it up over here. We're just coming in to throw a little extra damage down on it with him, and our Bolter is rank 30, which means we're done with it. I'm actually going to come over here and drop this last excavator down and get it planted. Nidus can cover that other one. I'll cover this one. We'll get through this a little bit faster because of that. All right, let's do it. Anybody coming by? I'm going to put my wall up and just fire through it here and miss a whole bunch because I have bad accuracy. That's all right, though. You don't have to have high accuracy to play Warframe. You just have to be able to think your way around each of the problems that you encounter, which is one thing I love about this game, because I am not the most accurate player of shooters. But I do enjoy them. In particular, Space Ninja ones, where you can fly through the air and shoot things from above. That's, that's always entertaining. Hi. Bye. Oh, stuck to the ground. Such a, a beautiful pose here, folks. He's voguing for us. That's uh, Corpus Corpse Vogue. Hello, friends. Uh, so this guy has the power cell we're after. We did just stick him to the wall. I love the way the bolter sticks stuff to the wall. I'll never get tired of seeing that. It's like an assault rifle that's also a bow. I'm gonna just shock everybody, get them stunned up and ready to die. And honestly, this is going to be pretty easy. The nullifiers here are the only things I'm reasonably concerned about. 
and even them I'm not really concerned about. I'm just making sure that they don't get close enough to cause problems. Stuck him to the wall, grab our power cell, we will be out of here in no time. 24 seconds until we're done and we can take off. And then we get to see what our nightmare mission reward is. Hopefully it's something good, guys. Everybody cross your fingers at home. Cross your fingers and your toes. If we get really lucky here, we might get something super nice. All right, he's down. And we are out of here very soon. It's done, let's go. Speed boost activate, let's get out of here, Nidus bud. Oh, Cephalite resources there, or resonance there, that's nice. That'll help us to continue the Nightwave puzzle if we want to try that. I wonder if there's a... You know what, I should actually do that, because I haven't thought about whether or not there's a reward for the Nightwave puzzle. I was just so glad to have Nightwave back, because it's one of the best sources of knit and extract and reactors. I didn't even think about the puzzle having a potential reward, that could be kind of cool. I will have to look into that now. Let's go. Uh, honestly, all of the Nightwave rewards this, this season are absolutely gorgeous. I like them all. Oh, no, no, no! Okay, well, we did complete the mission. We just went a little bit over overboard there. So we got Ice Storm here, which isn't bad. It's just not one of the best. It's uh, plus 10% cold damage, plus 10% magazine capacity. So you can see, though, it is a dual stat mod, which is rare. If we look at every single mod underneath it, they're all single stat mods. That's sort of the common thing. But this is why we do Nightmares, because we get dual stat mods. That one's honestly not one of my favorite, because of the the additional magazine capacity isn't great. Like, it's alright, but it's not great. There's a better one that's like 10% or 15% cold, 15% status that I'd rather use than this. Uh, but that doesn't necessarily come from Nightmares either. Okay, so Nightmare Mission complete. Let's go take a look at the Phobos Junction real quick. In order to get through the Phobos Junction, we need to have defeated 150 enemies in a single mission on Mars. I did that in a survival mission or defense mission. I did it in a defense mission. We need to open three Lith Void Relics. I showed you guys how to open relics on the last episode. And we need to scan three Cephalon Fragments on Mars. So that's the thing we haven't done, and I'm going to show you guys how to do that right now. Let's see, which mission do we want to take? Rescue's fine. This will also get us the War Node, which we're going to need to get the Series Junction. So I'm going to go ahead and do this one. Um, and I actually, before I do this, let's take a look at one of the important keys to making this work. To get through this part faster, I highly, highly recommend you bring a Thief's Wit mod. And I've gone ahead and upgraded this one to the maximum. The main reason is because that's going to give me a huge radius on the minimap. I will actually be able to see a bunch of the loot and things. Now that's very beneficial if you're running Syndicate missions, because in Syndicate missions there are loot nodes that contain uh, medallions and things like that that you can turn in for additional reputation with your Syndicate, so you speed up your Syndicate gains. Uh, so that's the main reason that's on there, but in this instance it's also going to help us, because it's going to help us find those Cephalon fragments that we need to scan. And I'll show you what it looks like on the minimap when we find it, and of course you've already seen how to scan it, but we'll go through the whole thing again. And that will unlock the Phobos Junction for us, which we'll knock out, and that'll be it for this one. Haha, -ha, and through the magic of video editing, I have spared you guys the rescue mission we did that did not have the Cephalon fragment in it. Uh, so we're here in a capture mission, which means that our objective is going to be very, very quick for us to obtain. Good way to find your Cephalon Fragments is just to take captures. Captures are generally the fastest mission in the game. So you note that I keep looking up at my minimap. I'm just kind of scanning it every few seconds to see if the Cephalon Fragment shows up. Oh, come on. You think you're going to hide from me like that, buddy? No such luck. And we have the capture target, just like that. So as we move to the exit, we're going to keep our eyes on the minimap. We are looking for what is a combination of like three blue diamonds. That is the symbol for the Cephalon Fragment. And once we find that, we can scan it with our Codex Scanner. Oh, just saw it. I just saw it. There it is. You see that on the minimap right there? It's four blue diamonds, actually. <clears throat> and here we go. Going to go ahead and pull our Codex Scanner out. There we go, Mars found, pops up. That's how we know we completed the scan and we can head on out. Sorry about that, folks. Uh, I just took a second because my allergies were giving me issues. Wanted to kind of clear my throat for a moment. So now we can move on through. 
Oh boy. So Nuloka doesn't like us. They're sending a kill squad after us again. Let's go, Nuloka. Oh, that's not what I want to do. That is also not what I want to do. Can I have my bolter? There we go. Give me my bolter. I'm waiting for this new Loka kill squad to spawn. I don't know what their kill squad consists of. But I'm honestly not super worried about it because we'll probably just take them out relatively quickly if they do spawn. Yeah, I don't know if they spawned or not. If they did, we didn't notice. All right, we're out of here. So we did get our Cephalon Fragment here and we are going to be able to do our Phobos Junction now. Nice quick capture mission. Like I said, capture is the best for just getting through that stuff. And as soon as we get done with the Phobos Junction, we'll probably call this episode. Uh, I might wait until next week for the next episode so that I have some time to get our MR up and get some more things prepared to show you guys. All right, Phobos Junction it is. Uh, but in the next one, what we'll probably cover is maybe getting through Phobos and setting up the series junction or potentially how to farm the materials you need for your Arcwing launcher. That's the main thing is I want to get to MR5 so I can show you guys the Arcwing launcher and how all that works uh, and how it's actually more of a craft than it appears to be because it's a double craft. Got a weird little bit of lag there for a second. Uh, okay. Who is that? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know which one we're facing this time, guys. Let's find out. Ready? Let's go. Who are you? Oh, it's Mag. Okay. Well, I mean, honestly... Ow. 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 Mag. Calm down. Let me reload. Alright, she's gone. Nice and simple there. We use our shield, we get our damage, we're done. Let's open up this rail and head on to Phobos. Now, one of the rewards from this is going to be a very, very important quest. That quest will unlock something that'll be your main source of endo for the rest of the game. Uh, and as long as you do that quest every week when it's available, you will probably never have endo issues again. Alrighty, mission has succeeded. We got Stolen Dreams is the quest I was talking about. We also got a Kraken blueprint and what looked like a Cypher blueprint. Tenno, your codex has yeah, been Cyphers are things you can use to skip the hacking minigame. Uh, and we got an infinite Cypher blueprint, which means that we can build a Cypher now if we don't want to deal with the hacking minigame anymore. And we have access to Phobos, which is awesome. Uh, so we could go through Phobos, but we'll do that on the next one probably. Or maybe I'll work through Phobos off camera and then we'll just work on the junctions and things. But I do want to be able to show you guys the Arcwing launcher soon. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you did, make sure to go ahead and give us a like or subscribe to the channel. And we will see you next time. Bye!